Welcome back to this Let's Play of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. Last time we went, we finished the Kraya Lecture series. Well, all she's going to give for this, this semester, at least. And, uh, we talked about our new party member here, Visus. Um, she's a Jedi Sentinel. She's the, the second actual Force user, uh, party member you get. I hear you. Um, she's not really all that impressive. She's not bad. Um... I'm giving her security skill. She, I may want it at some point in the future, and I really just don't care about anything else. Um, she doesn't have demolitions, though, so she can't really take the full part of a, a thief role. Um, but there is one place in the game where you have to use her, and I'm going to need somebody with security there. Um, for powers, I'm just giving her actually a fair amount of dark side stuff. Charisma inc decreases the penalties for using cross uh cross alignment powers so I'm gonna build Vsus as sort of a dark side user and focus on her charisma rather than focusing on her wisdom wisdom just gives you more raw force points to work with she already has a fair amount of clout in two weapon fighting and I gave her a little bit more um, not uh, anything super useful but uh, you know um, she does not keep her lightsaber obviously it's broken you've got the part from it I'm not gonna use her in this I area hear you. Um, I will use Atten a fair amount, and I will probably be using as my sort of primary party Kraya and Atten. Though Kraya is going to actually be left out a lot because I'm going to be putting in people for trying to gain influence with them, including Beador, even though he's a really kind of a useless character at this point. Since I'm not going to have Kraya on the party consistently, I'm going to switch back to using the minor uniform as my primary armor. It doesn't exactly give a whole lot of armor, but. Uh, it's better than nothing, and it doesn't keep me from using my uh, force powers. Let's uh, try and deal with our dark side problem from last time. And apparently this guy's just being mugged. No, no, look, you can't keep us trapped in the refugee sector. We can't survive there. You've got us locked in. And more or less they're saying, you know, go back to your ghetto. And they're wondering what we're looking at. And, uh, you know, we'll use the typical, what's going on here? And they say it's exchange business. Well, we've already established that we don't really like the exchange. And, uh, we're not going to let him hurt them. And they say, more the merrier. Yeah, okay. And we get some light side points. And, uh, I hear you. Charge in. Let's get this over with. Easy for, for Thanks one for your credit. Help. They would have crippled me for sure. One credit. Anyway, you could say, I could stand by and let them hurt you. It's blatant light side. Well, they work for the exchange. For a Quarren named Visquis. He's looking to step up in the exchange. The only language the exchange respects is money, so Visquis is trying to increase his profits by using the refugees here in Nar Shadda as a cheap labor force. We're only good to him as slaves and merchandise. He wants to keep us in one place so he can control us. That's always been the way. Well, except lately. Okay, um... We'll tell him to essentially get lost before, uh somebody else runs across him. Whatever your reasons, thanks. Okay. And we continue on. I saw what you did to those exchange thugs, stranger. Can you spare a few credits, maybe help another refugee in need? Oh, sure. Here, here have five credits. Thank you, stranger. I won't forget your kindness. Why did you do such a thing? Such kindnesses will mean nothing. His path is set. Giving him what he has not earned is like pouring sand into his hands. Okay, Kreia sort of butts in regardless of whether or not she's actually here. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know where she is, actually, because that doesn't look like the Abin Hawk in the background. And, uh, we can sort of choose the Terminator 2 option. You know, there is no fate but what we make. And would that be a kindness? What if by surviving another day, he brings a greater darkness upon another? Okay. And, uh, 
And what if he doesn't? The force binds all things. The slightest push, the smallest touch, sends echoes throughout life. Even an act of kindness may have more severe repercussions than you know or can see. By giving him something he has not earned, perhaps all you have helped him become is a target. Seeing another elevated often brings the eyes of others who suffer. And perhaps in the end, all you have wrought is more pain. And that is my lesson to you. Be careful of charity and kindness, lest you do more harm with open hands than with a clenched fist. Okay, a uh, little Jade Empire reference in there. I don't know if Jade Empire had actually come out by the time this game came out. Um, anyway, you can um, choose a variety of options here, some of which will lose influence, and we can say we'll consider what she has said. Good. Mind what I have said. Use your power, but in its proper place. And uh, we don't lose influence with Kraya. If you sort of piss her off, you can uh, lose influence there. You still get the light side points, though. Let's talk to this guy here. Spare a few credits, friend. Um, and here, we'll buy some information off of him. Uh, alright. I don't know much beyond the refugee sector here, but I can share what I know. And, uh, we're looking for a Jedi Master. Jedi Master? There aren't any Jedi Masters in the galaxy let alone on Nar Shaddaa. This place is a cesspit, with the Exchange and the Hutt stabbing their claws into everything. But, you know, I did hear something about a bounty on Jedi, though. Something the Exchange posted. Doesn't matter, though. There aren't any more Jedi around, so no one's going to be collecting that bounty. Okay, well, um, this is maybe kind of a suicidal option to say that you are a Jedi, but uh, apparently... You know, with the scene when we arrived here, it's not like that's a big secret. You're lying. You're mad. A Jedi wouldn't come to the... You're serious. You're telling the truth. What are you doing here? Are you trying to get us out of this place? Please, you have no idea what life is like here. And, uh, the blatant light side option. If I can, I will help everyone. Of course. Of course. Tell me, what else did you want to know, Jedi? Um, nothing really. Look, Jedi, before you go... I know you probably didn't come here to save us, but... But I knew Jedi during the war. And I know that they always helped when they could. If I can help you, even just by keeping an ear out, I can let you know if I hear anything. That'd be useful. I'll do that then. I'll come seek you out if I hear anything I think you might want to know. Yay, more gratuitous light side points. Are we back up to uh, super light side power? Not quite yet. Oh well. Next stop is this shop here, this swoop garage. Hey, this guy's talking to someone. Want? Nothing. Just answers to some questions. It's okay. I already know she's a Jedi. You do? Then why? Mm, trust me, Narshada just got complicated. Hmm, who's that? Yeah, she's on a lot of the uh, packaging material for the game, so it's pretty obvious that she's, uh, she's not an irrelevant character. That container there had an airspeed navigation interface. I don't know what that's going to be for, but that's clearly not just a standard item. And, uh, this is, uh, a droid speaking, you know, obscenities, I guess. And he's the 32nd model of droid made by this guy. And, uh, he says all of his predecessors have, uh, blown up. And, uh, he mentions that his master is, uh, not real competent. And, well, I you know, have a chat with his master. It was apparently somewhat blind. And the droid more or less tells him to point where his head so he's actually talking to someone rather than just looking off in space. Tien, it's Bayadur, 12th Engineering Division, out of Iridonia. I worked with you in the hangar base on the Salamoth. And he says, yeah, I remember you too. And he's sort of asking, what, what are you doing? Tien, we are already in trouble. In some ways, the war is not yet over. And our enemies are seeking us even now. Yeah, that's what I thought. 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 Yeah
We can ask if he's all right. And he says, yeah, more or less. He's blind, but otherwise Sullivan's hearing is pretty sharp. If you couldn't guess from the lobes. And he more or less says, whispering is not gonna keep me from noticing it. And he says, I know someone who can change the Ebon Hawk's ID signature. Could be useful for avoiding notice. And uh, apparently Big Ears is a compliment, so. and showing some cross-cultural competence here. And uh, can you change the, the ID codes to the Ebon Hawk? He says it's not legal to do, but, uh, you know. He also explains that he needs raw materials to do it, so. So we'll uh, have to keep an eye out for those raw materials. He also has a workbench there, and he has no problem with you using the workbench if you uh, want to. I might actually make some good use of that workbench, uh, because this is the first workbench you can get to. Um, stop interrupting. He wants a favor. And um, he wants essentially us to uh, rescue his predecessor. And uh, specifically the, uh, the memory core. And he wants it from this guy named Coden. Anyway, we're running out of time. Between the episodes, I'm going to do some work at the workbench here. As I was about to say when I got interrupted, this is the first workbench you can get to where you can actually have access to all your party members, just switch them out and use whoever skills you want. I still can't break down things efficiently, but at least I can make stuff. That is, however, all the time we have for this episode. See you next time.